It's a guy named Tom, ultimately, that sort of is driven mad uh, out to the desert, needs to get away, and ends up, you know, sort of going crazy but showing us who he is out in the desert and things happen. You know, murders are committed. And he ends up coming back to Los Angeles and that's really where the story starts. The most important thing about the Los Angeles segments is that nobody really has anything. Nobody's really settled in Los Angeles. You know, we have the Los Angeles of people who don't know what they're doing or why they're there of unfurnished houses, you know, of, of continual existential crisis in every direction. So it was for the first chunk of the script is, you know, a guy that you know nothing about, no words are really said, and then finally, third of the way into the film, uh, you start to unpeel the layers and realize who this person is. Oscar and I were sitting down uh, at my place after rap one night and I kind of broke it down to him what I thought it was in my mind and I said, a guy goes out to the desert to kill the devil within himself and ends up bringing him back with him. Anybody that's in the industry would sort of know what drove this guy to start off from page one in the script driving, you know, 100 miles an hour out into the desert. The desert's always appealed to me and the idea from Mojave came about 10 years ago when I actually was, uh, I was sick of the film industry. So I took a four-wheel drive vehicle, went out into the middle of the uh, Alkali Lake that we have in the film, and uh, lay back on the hood of the car exactly as Tom does in the movie. S absolutely sick of the film business. But then I sort of tilted my head to the side on the car and I looked at the sun flaring behind the mountains and I thought, my God, that's a camera position. So my attempt to get away from the film industry ended up <laughs> being Mojave. You have to get the, the hell away once in a while, and if you don't, you know, it can be damaging to the soul and damaging to others and damaging to yourself, and that's exactly what Tom is going through at this very moment. He's very successful, but he doesn't enjoy it, he doesn't need it, and that's what you get to see comes to realize within this. So Tom blasts out to the desert, and once he's out there, sort of living what you would, uh, live in the moments and what you would find ideal, you know, it's exactly what you went out there for was to just drive as fast as you can, sort of get wasted, camp out in the middle of nowhere, look up at the stars and realize what you want to appreciate in life and what you haven't appreciated and all of this kind of comes to play piece by piece throughout the film and you know, you sort of realize you may have not have been a great guy to start from, may not be the best of guys by the end of it, but I, I find that you tend to feel for them just because you know, of, of that degree of uh, mental torture being so empathetical to so many. Ends up coming across a guy that's a genius in the, in the mountains, that's very much an intellectual sort of doppelganger of himself. Walked into the wrong camp, brother. It was you. speaks the same language in, in, a, in a very specific way, but they're so, they're so opposite in terms of where that knowledge got them to within their life. I play the role of Jack, who's a desert rat, cycle killer in the Mojave Desert, and uh, he's a brilliant man, a lot of potential, he's a writer. 
right or but, uh, something went askew at some point in his brain and so he's just isolated himself from humanity and he's just alone with his thoughts in the desert. Right now we're at uh, Jack's camp, which was described in uh, the sort of the early days as sort of a meth camp. What it is basically is an art camp. Uh, Jack is an artist who has chosen to live in the desert and has uh, also expanded into being a homicidal maniac. The camp itself, including the, uh, the airstream he lives in, is a uh, sort of a complete expression of his personality. And, uh, you know, the polymathic nature of his talents. Even after he's been shot, as Tom rummages through his effects, it indicates uh, that Tom has actually killed a double, so to speak. Someone who, if, as in script, women and the weather had gone a different way, uh, could have been in Tom's position, whereas Tom could have been in his. Oscar's, Oscar's fantastic. It's the second film we've done together. We've been uh, great buddies for the last maybe five years. So like I said, we've been really looking for something to do together. And it was great to be able to um, you know, have this as a situation, Bill Monahan's script. But the, one of the best things about it is, you know, we're such good friends in this, we're playing such psychological enemies, but also at the same time, two guys that you just really want to be best friends and settle on that. I mean, at the end of the film, when he says, you know what we're gonna do, we're gonna have a drink. I mean, honestly, you, you could do a whole film with the two of us sort of sitting at a table and having a drink with Bill's writing. You know, it'd be a dream situation for me. I was actually a filmmaker before I was anything else. Uh, I was always in love with film. There was a moment when I watched Lawrence of Arabia, and suddenly it struck through to me that somebody had written it. I think a couple of days later, after I was just thunderstruck by Lawrence of Arabia, I discovered a copy of Dylan Thomas's screenplay for The Doctor and the Devils. So that was the first screenplay I ever read, and that was what I worked off of. Do visualize films, and uh, the screenwriting classes always tell you not to write shots, as if you have to leave it up to a director or a committee. But the fact is, people, a director does want you to write the shots because it allows everybody to see the film in their heads as they read it, and he'll do his own thing on on location anyway. So. You know, the screenplay, first of all, has to be a good read and it has to be a selling tool to get the actors. Because if you don't have the actors, you don't have the movie in any sense. When I read it, I was like overexcited because uh, I loved it and I'm a huge fan of indie American movies. To work with Bill Monahan is completely the opposite of French directors. It's really faster. Actors don't wait uh, at all between scenes. Everything is really fast. He knows what he wants, so I was really com confident, you know. Uh, I wasn't afraid. I don't know why, because it's a foreign country and I didn't met him before the first day of shooting, which is really weird. I met Bill and he asked me to play in front of my computer with him. So it was really so bizarre, so strange to play with someone thousands and thousands of kilometers far away that you never met. Yeah, really. Well, now it's funny because today most meetings take place over Skype, which is uh, something, uh, you know, special. Um, I met him over Skype, actually. Uh, it feels great. He's just a genius writer. There's very few movies nowadays that uh, allow for this kind of language to come out of a character's mouth. I mean, I could compare it to really uh, theater, but even in theater you don't have to compare it to the class.
classics, really, such poetry uh, in the words. So. Working with Bill has been incredible on this. I, I mean, I've always been such a fan of his work, and I mean, he's such a genius. He's he's one of the smartest people I've met, honestly. I mean, the the, the um, analogies he pulls out of the box to describe these particular situations. I mean, it could be mythological or it could be biblical or it could simply be a scene from Lawrence of Arabia. And, and that's where the inspiration came for this particular shot or this particular moment. And that's what he wants to capture. And it's, you know, the communication within that is so unique and, and I understand it completely and I love it. And he's, he's I mean, yeah, he's, Hands down, one of the smartest people I've met. The style in which Bill shoots is something that I love so much because we're shooting this so quick. 24-day shoots are not easy for a, for a whole film production. First, um, I had to get a visa for, for working here, and it was a nightmare to get it because <laughs> I didn't really at last minute and uh, I did it a Thursday to have it a, to, to get it a Saturday and I was leaving a, a Sunday so it was crazy. Louise was you know fantastic as uh, Millie. It's uh, she's a wonderful person, she's a wonderful actress. Um, you know I, I can't say enough great things about her. She's, <laughs> she's so sweet. Yeah. None of us ever really conquer our worst half. Um, you know, it's always there. You know, there's a line in the scene that was played last night, we we played again tonight where Jack asks uh, Tom, do you believe in the duality of man? And Tom replies, no, I believe in infinite complexity. And uh, that's more or less where I come down on it as well. The thing about Mojave is it's a film of ambiguities and you know, there is a bit of a question about who the bad guy is. Uh, but, um, you know, we're all the good guy and we're all the bad guy.